In this episode, I will tell you what environmental variables are and how to use them in your Node.js apps. So let's start. Take a look at this example application, which is an Express server with MongoDB. On the top, we have all dependencies, Mongoose, Express, and body parser, which parses JSON data passed in the body of our quest. Then we create one Mongoose model, user with name, email, and surname fields. After that, we have three routes, hello world, one returning last 10 users, and root which creates new users and save them in the database. Lastly, there is a run method which connects with Mongo and launches the HTTP server on port 3000. Let's see how it works. Run the server, and in a separate terminal session, let's invoke API endpoints by using CURL. Let's get all the users. We see that the database is empty. So now, create a first user. Let's use my name as an example. User has been created. And invoke the get endpoint again. User is in the list. Let's go back to the code. We see that the application has two constants, which value should depend on a particular machine on which code is executed. Mongo connection string and the port on which the application runs. Let's say you develop this application with a friend, but his Mongo server is running on a different port, let's say 3000. So he will have to change that Mongo connection string, and since port 3000 will be taken, he should also run the express server on a different port. And when he commits his changes to the repository, application won't run on your machine. Environmental variables are the way of handling this kind of issues. So let's use them in our example. First, let's move our constants definitions to the beginning of the file. Let's create two constants, Mongo URL and port, and update the console log. First, set them to original values. Comment the values because we'll need them later. Environmental variable in Node.js are stored under the process.env property. We will use that. Now we have to set those environmental variables. The easiest way is to do this when we launch the server. Let's try it out. And now we see that the server is running on a different port. We can update our example by setting default values. We can do this by using logical or operator. When the first value can be converted to true, it is returned. Otherwise, return the second expression. Now we can launch the app with default settings, but our friend can run it by passing his parameters. As you can imagine, setting environmental variables every time we launch the app is not the most efficient way. A better solution would be to load them from a file, and .env package will help us do that. First, let's install it. Next, we have to create an .env file in the root of our project. Make sure you name it exactly .env because it is a standard name for a file holding environmental variables. Fill it with the values we use in our app. And now we have to load it in our application. We can do this by using config method. Let's check out the server now. OK, we see that it is running on the port specified in .env file. Usually, .env files hold secret values as secret keys to external services or even raw passwords. We have to make sure this file won't be synchronized with the git repository. We can do this by adding it to the git ignore file. Also, a good practice is to add example.env file to the repository. 
that the developers working with you will know which environmental variables they can use. Let's use .env as an example. There is a one more thing I want to mention when working with .env files. Usually, when the app is working in production, you will set the environmental variables in a tool which will run the app, like Docker or a process manager. That is why in production you should omit the .env config statement. To check if the app is working on a production or on local machines of developers, you can use note env environmental variable. By convention, when this variable is set and it equals to production, it means that the app is running on the real server and it won't load the .env file. Okay, now we know how environmental variables work and how to set them in our application. In the next episodes, we will need this knowledge because we will set up the Docker containers with our Node.js app. Stay tuned and see you next time.